Hey guys, today I'm joined by the members of Alt Rock Band Vacant Shade, Zach, Jono, Kyle and Luke. Thank you guys so much for being here considering you're all currently spread across the East Coast. How's it going? Great, good. Thanks. Hey, good. good, thanks. How are you? <laughs> After what I've heard has been a four-year process, you're finally releasing your debut album, Wonderland. Uh, Zach, how's that feel and what has the process been like along the way? Um, it's It's been really good. Um, it's It's been a long time coming. It's taken a while to get here, um, but pretty stoked for it to finally uh, be happening. Yeah, I can imagine. It must be exciting after all the build-up, so four years that you've been working on this, so... Super excited to hear it in the coming week. Um, so, Jono, what was the inspiration behind the title and concept of Wonderland? Um, oh, well, we threw a different ideas around here and there. And then um, I think it was either Zach or Luke came up with the, the concept of Wonderland and, and like, to, I don't know, you could say, like, reference the theme of the movie, but, like, you know, obviously to portray it within music. I think originally we started... Like the first song on the album we wrote was Wonderland Part 2, I think. Mm -hmm. So we kind of like, yeah, it was really weird the way we wrote it. But it kind of went, started off backwards in a way. It's kind of cool. So, yeah. Okay. And uh, you guys have moved around uh, a little bit in terms of your dominant genre since starting in 2012. Um, Kyle, do you think you're going to stick with your current alt rock image or can we expect a bit more variation and diversity to come? Um. I think it's kind of like weirdly a bit of both because we, I feel like we're always going to stick to the roots of what we kind of started with as a band, but we've kind of come to terms with being very open and kind of like diverse with the kind of sounds and genres that we use. So we're always trying to experiment, change a lot of things up to keep it refreshing for us, but mm -hmm. we're always going to, I think, stick to that as the core. So it's always good to try to keep a balance between new and old things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And who are some of the artists that have inspired or influenced your current sound? Uh, I would say current sound, definitely 100%. Uh, Violent Soho. Uh, it's always a like a group love with that band. Mm -hmm. uh, it's always been a big inspiration musically, lyrically, and like the energy they give is always something we try to capture. So I think it's kind of been a big direction and kind of like a game changer. For me personally, like bands like trophy eyes just the things they do musically is kind of like a big inspiration where I want to be as like a musician and a writer so I try to use that a lot when I kind of bring it to the table mm -hmm. and as for everyone what sort of artists really got you into the industry in the first place or who inspired you to take this sort of career path how about you go Jono <laughs> I'll maybe I'm speak as well first time eh? <laughs> yeah <clears throat> uh, Luke, do you want to start this one off? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so I would say the best uh, influence on me, the biggest influence on me was Nirvana. Um, I think back in 2010 or whatever, I just had this complete musical revolution sort of thing that um, really affected me and I was really into the sort of grunge, uh, grunge movement and all that sort of thing. Um, and I guess it kind of spiraled from there and I kind of got into more pop punk stuff Link 182, and then I think over time it's really, I guess, funneled down into more alt Australian rock. Music. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's uh, but to answer your original question, yeah, I think Nirvana for me was the biggest influence, really. Let me go from there. Yeah, Zach, what about yourself? Um, uh, for me, I uh, didn't really have much of uh, musical interest until probably. Uh, the beginning of high school uh it's when i i guess i kind of really started to um get thrown into a lot of different genres uh all at one time it wasn't kind of like a journey it was kind of like everything thrown at me all at once so i've got you know a lot of punk music a lot of grunge music pop punk uh, a lot of metal heavy metal uh even like a lot of pop music as well um so a lot of things just starting uh all at once and then it, it kind of just kind of picked here and there it's always kind of been a very diverse sort of uh like listening uh for me so it's uh, a, a lot of influences uh but i think one of my first ones would be three days grace um and then from then when i met the band like a bit of nirvana as well a lot of blink 182 
uh, and then uh, not too long after Violent Soho became a huge influence on me uh, just being a, an Australian band and uh, that really uh, heavily influenced uh, my um, I guess uh, music that we produce in the band now so a lot of yeah. yeah. Jono, what about yourself? Um, oh, not too sure. Like when I when I first started playing, it was probably U two and Coldplay that kind of got me into like, um, like my style of guitar playing. Mm -hmm. Um, and I listened to Blink One Eighty Two a fair bit, but it was actually Luke who introduced me to like grunge. Yeah. So, Ooh. but um, the first song we covered as a band. Um, was smells like teen spirit, so mm -hmm. you know, back in the old days, um, yeah, and then it kind of just like we just rolled off each other, I guess, and then we all kind of like you know, when Zach found violence, so her, I guess we all kind of like found violence, so her, we all just kind of like followed each other's thing, so yeah, fair enough. And yeah. uh, Kyle, as for your personal influences, who do you think has been the most, uh, I guess, influential in really beginning your music career? The beginning. Um, for me, the the band I really uh, go to most back when I was younger, which kind of got me into all this music, would be Rise Against. A kind of that mix of like grunge in their early days and then more punk in their later days. And that was like I would just listen to them all the time. And that kind of really influenced like my guitar playing, my music choices, and just like the passion I kind of grew into mm -hmm. as well. With that, that was that was definitely like my first my first start. Yeah, cool. Um, so going back a bit, how did you guys uh, actually get started? How did Vacant Shade uh, come to be? Luke, can you tell us a bit about that? <laughs> um, oh, geez, I have to tell you the PG version. <laughs> so Jono and, uh, uh, Jono and myself and a friend of ours were just jamming in the music rooms at school. And uh, all of a sudden, this guy ran up to the window and just started singing obscenities, I guess you could say, towards us. And uh, we sort of took it as a joke um, and invited him in to join us. And then it, it kind of somehow got serious along the way. Um, I guess we obviously abridged the uh, lyrics that Zach was singing. We made a very awful song, but um, it was the start of something new. And then uh, we, I guess, adopted Zach into our band. So uh, that was a good time. Good time. Fair enough. And then the others yeah. just... Uh, found their way in so like Daniel who couldn't be here today yeah, yeah. rip Daniel uh but anyways he um Kyle actually came to us in 2013 um because we needed an extra guitarist for one of our shows and we sort of picked him up as well uh he became part of the band and our newest addition was after our bassist Kenny left uh back in 2018 but Daniel was also in another band the Lenores who I saw you were, um interviewed the singer of that stuff um, and he's actually like a, been a really good asset for us. Like we're really glad to have him on board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's great. To, yeah. Um, and how did the name Vacant Shade? Uh, where'd that come from? Uh, I think Luke knows this one again. I think Luke came up with it. Luke, do you want to explain? <laughs> See, I don't actually like giving away the actual reason, but I'll give you a few, and you. I guess you can choose from there. <laughs> um. Okay, so at the time I was very into two bands, Silverchair and also the Sex Pistols. And they had this, Silverchair had this song called Shade, and Sex Pistols had this song called Pre Vacant. Um, and then I sort of put the two words together and named the band that. Um, another option you could go for is that uh, we sort of wanted to name ourselves up to something that everyone's kind of looking for. So in a summer on a very hot day, you might be looking for some vacant shade. And we sort of went with that. Um, and that's about all I can think of right now. You can choose between the two. Yeah, take it there. I, I like the second one. I like the second one better, I think. Well, let's go with the second one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, um, and uh, Zach, after the release of Wonderland, what's next for you guys? Uh, can we potentially expect a tour in the near future or some new music coming up shortly, maybe? Yeah, uh, well, hopefully, yeah. Um, I guess it really it just depends on um, the opportunity uh, that's given to us if we are, are able to uh, do that and also you know the hard work behind it too I guess uh, during these times um, we just gotta um, really uh, just get what's given to us and then hopefully down the track when things start loosening up and when 
local bands can start um, playing shows again um, and start touring, then hopefully we'll be able to uh, do that, uh, whether that be hopping on with another band and touring with them or our own tour if we're lucky enough. Uh, and then hopefully, yeah, so more music down the track uh, as well. We've already got some stuff we're um, already getting into. Uh, I guess we're never really stopping. All right, great. Sound good. Um, and uh, lastly, as a band, what's your biggest career goal? Uh, is there someone you'd love to collaborate with or an event or venue you'd love to headline or be most excited to headline? Um, Kyle, can you tell us a bit about that? Um, for me personally, uh, a goal would be to just like, to just tour, like just to do a tour, just to, just to know that we're giving it a go, just to, you know, have people come to a show and just like sing back a song, just to have like, just to experience like those kind of band life things, just at least do it once, you know. Yeah. Uh, headline, like a show, definitely opening like, like say like a Groove in the Moo or a Splendor, that would always be like a, like a, is this real kind of moment that I'd love to experience at least once. Mm-hmm. Yeah, does everyone else agree with that? Or is there anything else you guys would love to see the band eventually go on to do? I think I think it would be really cool to eventually, um, I know it's a lot harder, I mean, like in the current way the industry is at the moment, but to be able to do this as like, you know, as like a, you could say, career or part-time career, do you know what I mean? Where like we, we can do it often and produce more music and get it out and play regular shows and and just like make it last longer if you know what i mean because like it's um yeah we're like a little family aren't we guys yeah very yeah, dysfunctional family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah i think it would be re- it would be really awesome to uh i mean i guess we all have our dreams of collaborating uh with the people that we're inspired by um and who are influencing our music as well but i guess also um being able to collaborate with other uh bands local bands um who are also on the same grind and putting as just much effort and work in as we are uh and i I think that'd be uh, really awesome to be able to uh not only uh try and get there and uh, play with those bigger bands but also to see other bands who are doing uh, the same thing as we are and uh, being able to see them do uh, do that as well and you know playing Splendor or you know playing Groove in the Moor or playing you know the uh, Factory Theatre or you know Enmore Theatre or all those shows like I think it would be a dream come true but really at the end of the day we're just doing it because uh, we just love to do it and we want to see other people love it as well. Yeah it'd be great. Sorry what was that Johnny? Oh, it's just agreeing. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It would be great to definitely see you guys headline some events and really get your name out there a bit more. So hopefully we will see more of that. Um, but thank mm-hmm. you guys so much for joining me today. It's been great chatting with you guys. Um, and all the best with your new album. I will put uh, the link below to uh, pre-save that and download it. Um, so definitely to everyone watching, go check it out. I'm sure it'll be great. Um, so, yeah, I'll add all those links in below. But thank you guys so much for your time today. Um, yeah, so thanks again. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thanks for having us. No worries. Bye. 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 That one didn't go too bad. It wasn't too bad.